I've been having so much fun digging into leveraged ETF that I wanted to bring to you a video with four times the content. If it's four times the content, does that make it a leveraged video? It's four times the content because there are four S&P 500 leverage ETFs for investors to choose from. I'm Skylar James, welcome back to the channel. Here are the tickers, SPXL and UPRO are 3X bull ETFs and SSO and SPUU are 2X S&P 500 ETFs. What are the differences and which one would I be choosing to maximize my profits? I'll tell you shortly. And remember, leverage ETFs aren't for everyone. These are high level investment tactics that come with more risk and potentially more reward than standard ETFs. Prepare yourself before you jump into anything. If you're a subscriber, you know I approach leverage ETFs the same way each and every time, regardless of the niche or sector. And if you're new to the channel and not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Join us as we discuss topics, easy to digest, educational topics centered around investing and business and the markets as a whole. The first question I ask about every leverage ETF, do the underlying holdings of this ETF have strong macroeconomic tailwinds behind them? Believe it or not, this is a really challenging question to answer regarding S&P 500 and leverage ETFs. Because the S&P 500 involves such a broad set of holdings, when we look at, say, semiconductors with SOXL or cybersecurity with UCYB, it's pretty easy to say, oh yeah, these companies are going to be more important in the coming decades than they are today, generating more revenue than they are today. But do the companies in the S&P 500 have a common thread? What's the thread? It's nothing really, it's just market cap, just the size of the company. Johnson & Johnson and Tesla aren't in the same niche. Valero and Applied Materials share virtually no connection. The S&P 500 is agnostic to industry and it makes predicting its future movements more challenging. So what are the tailwinds for an investing theme like the S&P 500? Two words, creative, destruction. Creative destruction is the answer. Joseph Schumpeter gifted us this phrase back in 1942. It's the idea that new technologies are actively replacing old ones and that new companies are racing to take market share from existing ones. This concept is the core reason the S&P 500 is such a powerful investment strategy. New, stronger companies replace the antiquated, fading ones. All the while, the index itself marches ever higher. Process these facts. In the 15 years since Google entered the 500, its share price is up almost 1300%. But ExxonMobil, which was the largest company in the 500 at the time Google first entered, has risen only 4% in the same amount of time. 4% since 2006 compared to 1300%. Stock picking isn't easy. Are you wondering how the S&P 500 index holders fared since March of 2006? Well, they'd be up 250%. Note that none of these numbers factor in dividend reinvestments, and we're not talking about leverage here, just the S&P 500. But the point remains, Exxon was dethroned as the largest company, but holders of the index still made money lots of it. So the macro tailwind for the 500 as I see it is this process of creative destruction. This eternal churning of bad businesses out and strong businesses in. That's how we'll answer the question one about these leveraged ETFs. Question two, when I'm deciding on a leverage ETF, is the underlying index, the unleveraged version of the S&P 500, a place where you would invest money? Of course it is, it's the S&P 500. It's the most tried and true investing strategy in existence. Think of the wisdom of ultra wealthy Warren Buffett. He said, never bet against America. There's no way you can bet against America and win. And that buying the S&P 500 is buying America. He also said, because people like me and you don't buy the S&P because nobody likes getting rich slowly. Okay, Warren, how about this? If the S&P 500 gets me rich slowly, what happens if I three exit? Now we're getting somewhere. So question two, is the underlying investing thesis solid? You bet. Or uh, you invest? That sounds more like it. There's no gambling going on here. Whichever term you want, time in the S&P 500 is one of the best ways for investors to generate a return. Don't try to justify it with why or how, just be there for the long haul. And the third question for leverage ETF holders, are you willing to hold on through the downturns? 
I won't spend much time here. I've got deeper insight in my TQQQ video and other leverage pieces on my channel. I'll give you some leaks at the end of this video. Know that holding a leverage ETF for the medium to long term requires an iron stomach. It requires holding tight through the downturns. It requires hitting the like button. Now, no, I'm just kidding, but I do like seeing those thumbs ups. Remember, the psychology of selling low is overwhelming and investors will get burned hard if they sell during a market crash. So those are the three questions. What are the tailwinds, which we said was creative destruction, basically the DNA of the index. Is the underlying index investable? You bet it is. It's the most widely accepted investment strategy in existence. And will you have the stomach to hold on as this roller coaster we call leverage ETFs drop steep and fast? That's for you to decide. So what are the specific options for leveraged S&P 500 ETFs? There are four in total. Two are 2X, two are 3X. Two are issued by ProShares, two by Direction. If you're new to this area, just know that these are two ETF issuers, ProShares and Direction. They specialize in leverage ETFs. Let me show you the two X's first. SSO from ProShares was the very first leverage ETF. It's been trading since 2006, has $5 billion in AUM and costs investors 0.91% in fees annually. SSO's competitor, SPUU from Direction, has just never really taken off. There's not really any other way to say it. Since debuting seven years ago, it's only netted 56 million in AUM. It's pretty stunning when you consider it's 27 basis points cheaper than competitor SSO. So what gives? Well, it's probably that these leverage ETFs are used by day and swing traders, people looking to move in and out of the market positions quickly based on custom metrics and breaking news. Liquidity is vital to day traders. The difference in expense ratio in these ETFs doesn't matter to day traders because the bid as spread on SPUU becomes so large that it negates the savings and costs. That's probably why SPUU has never built a base. Let's look at the performance. How have these two performed? They've both returned about 28, 29% annually for the last five years. That's not bad. Remember that as long-term investors using leverage ETFs, we're hoping to see outsized gains in exchange for higher volatility, higher risk, and higher expense ratio, right? As an example, let's take a look at the performance of the Qs, an unleveraged ETF covering the NASDAQ 100 for only 20 basis points and without the 3X downside risk. It's returned nearly identical numbers as SSO and SPUU over the last five years. Now that's not to say that 2X S&P 500 ETFs aren't worth investing in, simply worth noting how they compare to other investment choices. Between the two, I would choose SSO. The low volume, lower AUM, and large bid ask spread of SPUU make it too risky for me to purchase and utilize. Think about a volatile moment in the market, trying to sell your shares of SPUU will be like trying to swim with a cinder block tied to your foot. It's gonna be extra difficult and extra stressful. SSO for the win. Thankfully, the 3X leverage ETF for the S&P 500 are a bit more comparable in what they offer. They've both been trading for 10 plus years with comparable AUM expense ratios and bid ask spreads. And they have nearly identical returns. If I had to pick just one, I would take UPRO simply for the lower expense ratio. But the difference in expense ratio is less than 10%. And I wouldn't fault an investor for choosing SPXL instead. Let's put everything we learned into a nice neat wrapper. We said SSO is the oldest leverage ETF and by all accounts a great product while SPUU is a red flag. And choosing UPRO and SPXL are like two sides of the same coin, basically identical. If you're looking for more ETF or leverage investing, there is a great playlist right here. So let me know, where are you putting your coin? Tell us in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.